On today's episode, I will go over the Chicago Blackhawks winning the 2023 NHL Draft Lottery and I'll also talk about how Connor Bedard changes everything for the franchise. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Tuesday, May 9th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And real quick, just a reminder that you can follow along or subscribe for free on YouTube and wherever you may be listening to your podcast. Make sure to do that real quick so that you can get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each and every day. All right. Good morning, everyone. As always, thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. Thank you all for making the show your very first listen here to start off your day. Last night, of course, the 2023 NHL Draft Lottery took place, and coming into it, the Chicago Blackhawks had the third greatest chances of landing the number one overall selection, a.k.a. winning the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. That's kind of been the focal point of this franchise for the last year, and while, you know, the players on the ice and the entire coaching staff, none of them were tanking, right? They want to go in there, work hard, win games every day. That's just how players and how coaches work, and that's how they operate, but the front office, make no mistake about it, their thoughts and their mindset was focused around the 2023 NHL draft and the draft lottery, really since Kyle Davidson took over, and since we saw Alex DeBrinkett get traded to the Ottawa Senators ahead of the 2022 NHL draft, the reasoning behind everything that the Blackhawks have done in the last year has been to give themselves the best opportunity to select a potential franchise-altering player in the 2023 NHL draft. And while Blackhawks fans, it looks like the hockey gods And the ping pong ball gods were on our side last night as the Chicago Blackhawks win the 2023 NHL Draft Lottery. I seriously still can't even believe it. I don't know if I'm dreaming. The Blackhawks are going to be selecting Connor Bedard with the first overall pick on June 28th in Nashville for the 2023 NHL Draft. Simply unbelievable believable. The Blackhawks, of course, had the third greatest chance of coming out with the number one pick behind only the Anaheim Ducks and the Columbus Blue Jackets. They actually had a 70.1% chance of falling to the fourth or fifth overall selections, but throw that all to the side. None of the percentages matter anymore because the Blackhawks came out with the number one overall pick, baby. Absolutely massive. They get their franchise altering player. They get their game breaker. They get a generational talent in Connor Bedard. Connor Bedard will be calling Chicago his home. He's going to be playing at the United Center for hopefully quite a long time. And I know the city of Chicago and Blackhawks fans everywhere are absolutely ecstatic. And if you aren't ecstatic, it's probably because you don't know or don't fully comprehend the type of prospect that Connor Bedard is. And look, I know the kid's only 17 years old and I don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, but the words generational talent doesn't, they don't get thrown around often in the hockey world. And Connor McDavid, Connor McDavid, Connor Bedard, excuse me, is the first generational talent we've seen really since Connor McDavid. And he's been putting in the same, he's been put in the same breath as McDavid, Sidney Crosby, those special kinds of players that were just surefire number one overall selections coming out of junior. Connor Bedard is in the same boat as those two. And my oh my, have things now changed for the Blackhawks? The future is certainly looking brighter and that light at the end of the tunnel, Blackhawks fans. We're starting to see it. It's almost like we can touch it with our hands. It's amazing how much things have changed for this Blackhawks organization. And 
a little over a year since Kyle Davidson has taken over as general manager. I'll actually be breaking down all of that for segment three as I wrap up today's show. So make sure to stay tuned for that because here's a little spoiler alert. Kyle Davidson has done an amazing job since taking over as GM of the Chicago Blackhawks. But yes, the Blackhawks, by winning the draft lottery, baby, they're going to get their generational talent. Uh, And as I mentioned, that's why they entered this rebuild into the first place. And I know It was a tough thing to get the fans on board with, right? Particularly after Stan Bowman had announced that, you know, just a year or so prior that they were going into a full-blown rebuild. And then he winds up trading for Seth Jones. The Blackhawks get Marc-Andre Fleury. It looks like they're going to make one last run at, you know, trying to win a Stanley Cup with this group again. And that ends up falling flat on its face. And things wound up getting even worse because of that. Davidson comes in as GM and doesn't really have a choice but to go into a full-blown rebuild because of the position he was in. The Blackhawks clearly weren't good enough at the time on the ice to contend for a Stanley Cup, and they weren't bad enough to finish at the bottom of the standings to get a really solid draft pick. So they were really stuck in this limbo situation And it led to a lot of tough decisions. Davidson announcing the team was going back into a rebuild wasn't, you know, something that a lot of fans were ecstatic about. And I understand, I mean, watching this Blackhawks team this season was pretty brutal. And, you know, seeing all the players they've had to get rid of over the last couple of years, of course, you know, they let Dylan Strom walk last year. They let Dominic Kubalik walk. They didn't trade either of those guys. Um, they also, of course, you know, trade Alex to bring it right before the NHL draft last year, even going back further than that, trading Brandon Hagel to the Tampa Bay lightning. We've seen other good players such as Max Domi, Jake McCabe, Sam Lafferty. They've been shipped out of Chicago. And then of course, Patrick Kane was sent to the New York Rangers and Jonathan Taves has officially played in his last game as a Blackhawk after being 16 years as the captain, he won't be coming back. So there's been a lot of pain and suffering and tough times, you know, throughout this rebuild and watching all these awesome players come through Chicago only to wind up getting shipped out, you know, a year or two later, but it was all done for a reason. And that goal was achieved last night by the Blackhawks winning the 2023 NHL draft lottery. The reason priority number one, why they had to go into a rebuild They needed, obviously, to rebuild the prospect pool, yes, but the true thing you need is a franchise-altering player, a generational talent, in order to be considered true contenders ever again, because in today's NHL, it really does feel like you need a superstar in order to have a chance at the ultimate goal, and boy, it feels like the Blackhawks are getting a special talent in Connor Bedard, Um, like I said, in the same kind of breath as... uh, Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, when they were coming up. If you don't know about Connor Bedard, just go on YouTube and watch some of his highlights. Go look at some of his numbers because if you've been keeping up with the hockey world and you know about this kid, you understand how elite and how special of a skill set he possesses. I mean, an absolutely dominant player every level he's played at so far in his career. Just put up 143 points in 56 games for the Regina Pats of the WHL. I believe he was the first player to net 140 points in a season since Patrick Kane did so with the London Knights. But I think even more impressively than tallying 71 goals and 72 assists in 57 games this season, which is saying something, is the performance we saw out of Connor Bedard um, at the U18, U19 World Juniors, excuse me, where he was only 17 years old. He was, you know, still talked about as being undersized. That's kind of the one knack on Bedard, right? Is that he's five foot 10, 185 pounds, but he looked like a man amongst boys out there. And the funny part is he's the one that's actually two years younger than a majority of all the talent ended up putting up 23 points in seven tournament games to help Canada win the gold medal at the world juniors. So many highlight reel moments throughout that tournament, the game winner against Slovakia, where he just danced through everybody I mean, this kid is the complete package. When you break it down, he's got incredible speed. He can play at a high pace, an NHL-ready pace. He 
He's got elite vision. He knows how to carry the puck through the neutral zone. We see the drop pass being so evident in today's NHL. Well, that's the kind of player that Connor Bedard is going to be. He's going to be the one you're dropping the puck to so he can carry it up with speed, use his elite vision and savvy hockey IQ. He knows how to set up plays. He knows how to read the defense. On the man advantage, he's been absolutely deadly so far in his career. He's a tremendous skater in uh, outstanding stick handler can handle the puck really well through traffic can dance through tight areas get through defenders and then I, I think the most impressive part about Bedard is the shot that he possesses I mean I've heard multiple people say if you put him in the NHL right now he's going to have one of the best shots in the entire league and his curl and drag maneuver his quick snapshot the wrister it's it might be the best part of his game, and that's saying something when we're talking about a complete package here, a guy who has incredible playmaking ability and vision, incredible skater, good puck handling. He does literally everything on the offensive side of things magnificently. So for him to be known as a goal scorer with that kind of skill set around it, it really does feel like Connor Bedard has all the tools to be a perennial superstar and a 100-point player in the NHL. And I've even heard people say, you know, he's kind of got the shot of Austin Matthews and the speed and hockey uh, vision of Connor McDavid. And look, I'm not going to say Connor Bedard is going to be a comparison of those two players, but it is clear that he's more of a shooter than Connor McDavid was when he was coming up as a prospect and was the surefire number one overall selection. So yeah, there, there's obviously lots to love about Connor Bedard in the game that he brings to the table. The speed, the savviness, the puck handling, the goal scoring ability, the playmaking, it's all there. The only knacks really are his size being five foot ten. I mean, it's never stopped him and at any level so far. Obviously, the NHL is a different beast, but I don't think that's gonna hinder Connor Bedard too much considering he has all the rest of the tools. The only other concern is whether or not he's going to be able to play center at the NHL level because defensively it does feel like he has a little bit of uh, some, some ways to go in that department. But at the same time, for his WHL junior club this year, they really needed him on the offensive side of things because they were so challenged as a club in that department that he might have cheated defensively from time to time. And he certainly has uh, the speed and the hockey sense to play center at the NHL level. So we'll see how that continues to develop. But other than that, there aren't really any knocks on Connor Bedard's game. And boy, am I stoked. Still can't believe that he's going to be coming to Chicago, calling the United Center his home. An ecstatic feeling that has changed everything for the future of the Blackhawks. I'll be talking more about how this impacts the Blackhawks coming up in just a second here. I did want to talk for just a moment about a quick recap of the NHL draft lottery for those of you who may not remember or may have missed how everything shook up after the Blackhawks. So obviously Chicago baby jumped up two spots from number three to number one. The Anaheim Ducks, who finished dead last in the standings and had a 25.5% chance of getting the top overall pick, they jumped down to number two. Very likely will be selecting Adam Fantilli with the second overall selection. Then the Columbus Blue Jackets dropped from second to third. Kind of interesting, by the way, ESPN really dropped the ball on the coverage of this draft lottery because it seemed like they were going to go to commercial break and then unveil the top three. Kevin Weeks kind of spoils it that the Blue Jackets wind up with the third pick. Us Blackhawks fans are going to commercial break like, wait, what? Is it? Are we in the top two? Are we in the top two? Are we in the top two? Because it kind of does make a big difference. One and two, while threes, three, four, and five, you, you still feel like you can get a really good player there. That's kind of where it gets tricky. Numbers one and two is a little more cut and dry with Connor Bedard and Adam Fantilli. So that made for quite an interesting dynamic. I'm pretty sure ESPN butchered the covering uh, coveraging of this, um, but the Blue Jackets wind up with the third pick. It's going to be very interesting to see who they wind up selecting. Are they going to go with Leo Carlson, Matvey Makoff, or are they going to go with a little bit of a surprise and select Will Smith, who's kind of made a charge here in the last couple of months? going to be interesting to see later on in June. The fourth overall pick will belong to the San Jose Sharks. They stayed home. Montreal Canadiens wound up with number five. The Arizona Coyotes end up with number six. They'll actually be selecting twice within the top 12 picks. The Philadelphia Flyers got number seven. 
The Washington Capitals got number eight. Love this combination right here. The Detroit Red Wings and the St. Louis Blues. Neither of them jumped up very much in the draft lottery. The Red Wings will be picking ninth. The St. Louis Blues will be picking 10th. Love to hear that. While our Chicago Blackhawks are picking first overall and we'll be getting Connor Bedard this summer, baby. The Vancouver Canucks will be picking 11th. They were the last team that had a chance to get the number one overall pick as you can only jump up a maximum of 10 spots in the NHL draft lottery. As I mentioned, the Coyotes have two picks inside the top 12 at number six and 12. They got the 12th overall selection as part of the Jacob Chickering trade from the Ottawa Senators. And the Buffalo Sabres will be number 13. The Pittsburgh Penguins, who the Blackhawks beat at the end of the year to knock them out of playoff contention, they will be number 14. The Nashville Predators, forever in limbo. Uh, they're the 15th overall pick. I still don't know what that team is trying to do. It just makes no sense to me. And then the Calgary Flames will have the 16th overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft. That's how everything uh, wound out uh, being positioned after the draft lottery picks were made after the ping pong balls kind of decided the fate of all of these franchises. So we obviously know that the Blackhawks have the number one overall selection in the 2023 NHL draft. They're going to be taking Connor Bedard on June 28th. I can't wait to start counting down the days. I'm going to get a little calendar and start Xing them off because Connor Bedard is coming to Chicago, baby. I can't believe it still. What a day. What a time to be alive, Blackhawks fans. But other than the first overall selection, I do want to remind all you fans about how pretty the Blackhawks are sitting in terms of draft picks and how much better their prospect pool is looking and their future draft picks feel now that they've won the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. So yes, they'll be selecting first overall come June 28th in Nashville. Then they will also have the 19th or the 20th overall selection from the Tampa Bay Lightning as part of of the Brandon Hagel trade from last year's NHL deadline. Then the Hawks still have four second round picks in the 2023 NHL draft. They have their own. They have the one they got from the Rangers as part of the Kane trade. They have one from Ottawa as part of the deal to take on Nikita Zaitsev's salary. And then they also got one from the Lightning as well uh, due to the Tonser Tyler Johnson deal from a couple of years ago. So two first round picks, one of them is going to be Bedard and four second round picks for the Blackhawks in the 2023 NHL draft. And interestingly enough, we did hear Kyle Davidson say yesterday when he was interviewed after the draft lottery that now that they have Bedard, they can kind of try to start packaging some of those second. They also have two third round picks in this year's draft as well. Maybe packaging some of those picks together to get back into the first round once again, because now that you got Bedard, that's that's going to help, you know, obviously you don't think you're going to be tanking as much next year now that you have Connor Bedard, now that you've got the generational talent of generational talents in, you know, these handful of NHL drafts, it changes things for the Blackhawks. It might not change how fast the rebuild happens, but it certainly changes how everyone is going to look at it. And now that we've got a talent like Bedard in the bag, it does make sense for the Blackhawks to try and trade some of these picks. You don't need to have the prospect pool be quite as deep. Now, yes, that's still a luxury, but you don't need to stack it up because we have a generational talent, the ultimate goal in Connor Bedard. So I really do think Kyle Davidson is going to be aggressive with these draft picks and we'll probably see him make a move during day one of the 2023 NHL draft once again. And then even looking forward to the picks that the Blackhawks have in the future, I know it was kind of something that was critiqued at the time and even something that I critiqued as well. I'll be completely honest. It looks very wise now that, uh, Kyle Davidson elected to, you know, get a 2025 first round pick from the Toronto Maple Leafs as part of the uh, Jake McCabe and Sam Lafferty trade to get, you know, uh, a 2025 second round pick for the Max Domi trade to get uh, a 2024 first round pick for the Brandon Hagel trade. It all looks a lot smarter and stacks the Blackhawks, sets them up really pretty for future NHL drafts. I mean, looking ahead, the Blackhawks will have two first round selections in 2024, one from the Hagel trade and their own pick. They'll have two second round picks as well. One from the Riley Stillman deal that netted the Blackhawks, Jason Dickinson, and a second round pick as well as their own. They'll also have two third round picks again, one from the Debrinka trade and then their own pick. And even in 2025, two first round picks as well. I mentioned the Jake McCabe trade. We'll get the first from Toronto there as long as it's not a top 10 pick. 
Uh, and then we also have the Domi pick, a second round pick in 2025 as well. So the Blackhawks have at least two first round picks and two second round picks in each of the next three NHL drafts. They're adding Connor Bedard. The Blackhawks are really sitting pretty right now, Hawks fans, and it's a good feeling. It really is a good feeling. Add that to the $40 million of cap space they have going into this offseason, and my, oh, my, the Blackhawks are in quite a position. Everything has changed, Blackhawks fans, after the draft lottery. We get our generational talent, everything, all the suffering, all the pain, all the frustration. It's all worth it on a day like today because the Blackhawks are getting a special player like Connor Bedard that's going to change things for the franchise for a long, long time. All right, we'll take a quick commercial break here on Lockdown Blackhawks. Make sure to stay tuned as I'll be discussing the plan for the Blackhawks rebuild now that they've won the Connor Bedard sweepstakes here in just a moment. But first, I need to talk to you all about Indeed. And there's no I in team, but there is an I in Indeed. And that's the hiring platform that you need to help build yours. And when you're hiring, you need Indeed. Because Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. So instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. And Indeed streamlines the hiring process with powerful tools that find you match candidates. And I personally love Indeed because it's the only job site where you only pay for applications that meet your must-have requirements. So start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Again, go and claim your $75 credit right now at Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Need to hire? then you need Indeed. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Coming up in just a moment, I will talk about how the Blackhawks rebuild has changed and where possibly we could see Connor Bedard slot into the lineup next season. But real quick, I do want to let you all know about some of the awesome stuff that I have planned for Lockdown Blackhawks here in the next couple of weeks. Of course, I've already begun my season recap segments. I've already gone through players like Tyler Johnson, Andreas Athanasiu, Seth Jones, Connor Murphy, Alex Stalock, and a couple of others. I dive into each and every Blackhawks player season and give them a grade for their performance. So make sure to go and check out the YouTube channel to get all caught up on that segment. I've also recently had Rockford Icehawks players Joey Anderson, Alec Regula, and Ryder Rolston on the podcast. Make sure to go and check out those interviews if you haven't done so either. Uh, and then I recently had NBC Sports Chicago's Blackhawks insider Charlie Rumeliotis on the podcast. I plan on having Joe Brand from WGN back on here sometime soon for some good off-season chats. And then now that we know the Blackhawks will be selecting first, I'll be starting to get into my NHL draft profiles. They will be having a second first round selection as well. So not really going to be too much of a surprise who they select at number one, but I'm going to be diving into all the prospects they could be looking at with the 19th or 20th overall selection. I'll also start taking a look at potential free agent fits for the Blackhawks. And then now that we know where the Blackhawks are going to be going in the 2023 NHL draft, I'm going to be starting my end of season top 10 prospects list. So plenty of good stuff coming up here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Make sure to go and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. I know I probably have a lot of first time listeners on today's show with the Blackhawks winning the Bedard sweepstakes last night. So if you're a new listener and want to stay all caught up on everything Blackhawks this summer, make sure to go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. All right, enough of that. Segment two, I kind of wanted to talk about how the plan for this rebuild in Chicago changes now that the Blackhawks have won the draft lottery and Connor Bedard is going to be the newest superstar coming to Chicago in just over a month. And quite honestly, while this does change the expectations around the fan base and, you know, the ceiling that the Blackhawks could have once they open up the competitive window again by landing a player like, like Bedard, and they don't necessarily have to tank anymore because they have that franchise-altering player already in their bag, 
Uh, things are certainly a lot more exciting. That has changed the scope around Chicago, has changed the buzz in the city. You can already feel it. Blackhawks fans yesterday, absolutely ecstatic. Over $2 million worth of season tickets have already been sold, I'm sure. But Dar jerseys are going out the roof. Chicago is buzzing, absolutely buzzing to get the uh, second overall pick, the first overall pick, excuse me, for just the second time in franchise history. Blackhawks fans are ready, so ready to rally around this team once again. And man, what a change in feelings in just a matter of a couple of weeks, right? Like go from being down, Patrick Kane gets traded, Jonathan Taves plays in his final game with the Blackhawks. Feels like the end of an era, you know, it's really set in stone and um, it felt for a while there like, you know, we knew Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves were going to get traded. But again, it's just kind of like anything in life. You really don't know what you had until it's gone. And once both of them were gone, it was just like such an eerie feeling to watch this Blackhawks team and know that none of their Stanley Cup champions from 2015 are even around anymore. It, it was a really odd feeling. But then just a couple of weeks later to get blessed with a talent like Connor Bedard, uh, it's a crazy feeling, and I know Blackhawks fans are super stoked about the start of this new era in Chicago, and the ticket sales and the jersey sales are proof of that. But as far as how adding Connor Bedard changes things for this Blackhawks rebuild, we kind of heard general manager Kyle Davidson speak out on this after the draft lottery yesterday, and he said the approach from the front office isn't really going to change. And I do think that's the right mentality to have, right? Like now the Blackhawks, sure, with their $40 million in cap space, it would be easy for them to go and give away some money in free agency and help make this team intriguing and give Connor Bedard some pieces. But I think it's very clear that Kyle Davidson and this front office, they want to stick to the plan they have set in place. They don't want to deviate from that plan. And why would they? It's worked really well so far, as I'll be talking about here in just a moment. So it sounds like they still want to be very patient next season. They still want all those young players to be, you know, coming up at the proper clip. They're going to be having a lot more guys go pro and join Rockford. There's going to be a couple of guys like Alex Vlasic, Isaac Phillips, uh, Lucas Reichel, of course, Arvid Soderbloom. The expectation is for those guys to probably be full-time NHLers for the Blackhawks next season. And I really do feel like most of the holes that the Blackhawks have on their roster right now are going to be filled up by those types of players. And that's kind of the next step of the rebuild is giving those guys an opportunity to prove they can be, you know, legitimate pieces of this puzzle, prove they can be NHLers right here and right now. And then I think that's when Kyle Davidson and the front office will look at each other and say, okay, this is what we need. This is what we need to go add. We can give out this term. I just think they don't want to do that before they know exactly what they have as a full picture. Obviously they know they have Connor Bedard, but Bedard himself, while if he's as good as people are saying, he can certainly uh, make the Blackhawks more competitive. He's not going to be able to win them the Stanley cup alone. They're still going to have to have the right correct pieces around him. And there's still a lot of big questions to be answered, you know, like, can Alex Vlasic, can Isaac Phillips be shut down defensive defenseman? Can Kevin Korczynski be a number one defenseman at the NHL level? How is Frank Nazar going to bounce back after suffering an injury last year with Michigan? How is Wyatt Kaiser going to handle uh, being an offensive defenseman playing against grown men? You know, there's a lot of questions that still need to be answered. Who's the future in net for the Blackhawks? Is it Soderbloom? Is it Comesso? Is it Stauber? there's still a lot of questions that the Blackhawks need to answer. And I think Kyle Davidson wants to find out those answers at a proper rate. He's not going to force the answers out of these Blackhawks players. He wants them to let, let, uh, let their games kind of do all of the talking. And the best way to do that is by being patient and seeing what they have, not rushing anything. So while I do think the excitement, the buzz, the energy, the scope and lens around this Blackhawks team has undoubtedly changed. I don't think the plan from Kyle Davidson in the front office has changed all that much, even though they did land the top selection in the 2023 NHL draft. As far as where Bedard potentially fits into the lineup next season, I do believe he's going to be a full-time NHL or right out of junior hockey. I mean, I don't see there's any way that he's going back to Regina. I mean, 
it's only there or Chicago. He can't play in the AHL next season. He's going to be ready for the NHL level. I think everyone knows he and Adam Fantilli were the two that were like undoubtedly ready to step into the NHL immediately. Um, but as far as where we could see him in the lineup, taking a look at the Blackhawks roster right now, the guys who they have in the forward group that are signed on through next season, they already have a contract for next year, are Tyler Johnson, Taylor Radish, Jason Dickinson, Colin Blackwell, Cole Gutman, Lucas Reichel, Mackenzie Entwistle, Boris Kachuk. Those are the players that are already signed on. Philip Kershev will likely be coming back. Maybe one of Andreas Athanasi or, or Max Domi will be added, um, but all in all, the top six is going to be pretty thin for the Blackhawks next season, assuming they're not all going to be all that aggressive in free agency, as we heard GM Kyle Davidson say. So I think the expectation is for Connor Bedard to immediately be playing a top six role for this Blackhawks squad, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they put him as the top line center right out of the gate with Lucas Reichel as his wing um, maybe, you know, they want to ease him into it and they go with a second line role, but I see no reason for this kid not to be getting meaningful minutes right out of the gate. I think that's the way to do it. Like Connor Bedard has shown that he's got a skill set and has been hyped up as this talent that can come into the NHL right away and make an impact. I don't think you just ease him into it on the third line. Now, maybe I'm completely wrong about that, but I sure feel like giving him top six minutes with special playmakers, guys that he's actually going to be playing with in the future and getting an opportunity to build some chemistry with Lucas Reichel. Hopefully those two are a dynamic duo for quite a long time for the Chicago Blackhawks team. I think it only makes sense right out of the gate to give Connor Bedard an opportunity with Lucas Reichel on the top line. Maybe, you know, if they bring back Athna Siu, they put him on the top line wing or Max Domi, maybe even can play there as well. I do think you want to protect those two if you are going to be playing them together. That's kind of why, honestly, thinking about it now, Max Domi would make a lot of sense kind of being a, being the father figure out there on the ice for the young guys in Lucas Reichel and Connor Bedard. But I think that's the expectation for Connor Bedard next season to come into the NHL to be playing a top six role for the Blackhawks. And hopefully thriving in that opportunity and doing a lot of good stuff with Lucas Reichel because those two should be playing a lot together in the future. And man, I'm just so, so stoked thinking about that combination, hooking up for so many goals in the future. I seriously can't believe it, Blackhawks fans. I can't believe we're here. I can't believe we got him. So excited for Connor Bedard to join the Blackhawks for the 2023-2024 campaign. All right, before I wrap up today's show, I do also want to talk about the job that general manager Kyle Davidson has done since taking over as general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks because he didn't have an easy job to do when he came in. Not an easy job whatsoever, both on the ice with the mess that, you know, Stan Bowman left him with. I talked earlier, the roster not being good enough to win now. They also don't have a deep enough prospect pool to feel excited about their future. Basically, Kyle Davidson was left with no choice but to go into a full-blown rebuild. And then he also uh, had to, you know, kind of pick up the pieces and deal with the aftermath of the Kyle Beach lawsuit as well. So just not an ideal situation, obviously, for Davidson to be stepping in. But in just over one year's time, Blackhawks fans, he has absolutely turned things around for this franchise. And the light at the end of the tunnel, like I said, is absolutely starting to get brighter. And no, I talked about this earlier too. There were just so many tough decisions that went into the Blackhawks getting to where they are right now. So many tough decisions that, you know, fans didn't agree with. How pissed off, including myself, how pissed off was everyone when they saw the return for Alex to We were expecting, you know, maybe two, three first round picks for to It felt like a situation where the Hawks didn't have to trade him. So if they did, they should get a pretty good luxury of picks coming back their way. Well, turns out they only get the seventh and the 39th overall selections along with a third round pick. Everyone was disappointed by that, but it wasn't about the return. The Blackhawks, sure. It was about the return. They get their seventh overall pick. Kevin Korchinski looks awesome. They were going to get at least one first round pick for to it. The reason they traded him, though, is because he was going to help this Blackhawks team win this year, and they couldn't do a lot of that. And Luke Richardson and, and the players even gave Davidson a run for their money despite having an AHL-caliber roster at the end of the year that has to have you as a Blackhawks fan feeling excited 
about the future of this team, knowing that Luke Richardson was pushing the right buttons, basically with an AHL club playing against NHL rosters, has to make you feel confident that he could be the right head coach of this rebuild for the Blackhawks. But the trading to Brinkett was absolutely necessary to help the Blackhawks not win as many games because if he was here playing on that top line with Patrick Kane in the first half, it's going to lead to a couple more wins for the Blackhawks, and they may not be in the same position. That's the same idea behind letting Dylan Strom walk, and everyone goes and sees Stromer have a monster year with the Washington Capitals, and they're pissed. We didn't get anything for Dylan Strom. We let him walk. Why isn't he here in Chicago? Well, it's because he was going to help us win. Dominic Kubalik, even though he kind of had been inconsistent in his final couple of years with the Hawks, still a prime goal scorer. He was going to help us win. Patrick Kane had to be traded. We needed to go in a new direction. Jonathan Taves, as tough as it is to let the captain go after 16 years and all the memories and everything he's done here, it's because we had to turn a new chapter and go in a new direction. A lot of tough decisions made by general manager Kyle Davidson in the past handful of months But now that we've landed Connor Bedard, now that we got the number one overall pick, it all feels absolutely worth it because we needed to have this chance to get a franchise altering player, to get a potential, you know, generational talent like Connor Bedard, or even if they wind up with Adam Fantilli or or whoever, this is still what the Blackhawks needed to do to give themselves the the best opportunity to build back better and to open that competitive window for as long as possible. And let's not forget, that was the goal for Kyle Davidson when he took over here. It wasn't to fix this as fast as possible or to make the Blackhawks contenders as quickly as he can. No, it was to go about it right so that when they do become competitive once again, that window is going to be open for as long as possible. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't fun getting here. It wasn't fun watching all these awesome players get traded over the years. It wasn't fun watching the Blackhawks lose 60 out of 82 games or whatever it was. But days like the draft lottery and days like today make it all absolutely worth it and make you realize that Kyle Davidson was absolutely right. He was absolutely right, and he's done everything right, and I think he deserves a major round of applause. Even if this didn't work out for the Blackhawks, even if they didn't get Connor Bedard, it's still – it's more clear now that we did get him how good of a job he has done because of how he stockpiled the draft picks, the draft class that he had last year, making all these moves that, you know, in black and white, they didn't look like they made a whole lot of sense. But in the long run, they absolutely did. And now they have an opportunity to take a kid like Connor Bedard, who's going to change the future of this franchise for a long, long time. And, of course, the Blackhawks still have two first-round picks in 2024 two first round picks in 2025, the 19th or 20th overall selection this year from Tampa Bay. They have a ton of cap space. I expect Kyle Davidson to be aggressive and go get another first round pick. Um, it's, it's just been an incredible transition for the Blackhawks in the year and a half that he's been here. And looking at last year's draft class, Kevin Korchinski looks awesome. Gavin Hayes was a 40 goal scorer for the Flint Firebirds this season. Ryan Green was a huge impact player as a freshman for Boston University. Aiden Thompson had a phenomenal year with Denver, was a point per game player there. Dominic James with the University of Minnesota Duluth was an impact player, got to play for the United States at the U19 World Juniors. And that's just one draft class. A lot of those guys, while we're just a year separated from the draft, a lot of those guys have taken positive steps in the right direction, and the Blackhawks are high on a lot of them. And with the addition of Connor Bedard, I think it's safe to say that the Blackhawks have the best prospect pool in the entire NHL, and they're going to be having multiple first and second round picks for the next three years in the future. So that, my friends, is how you go about a full-blown rebuild. Kyle Davidson absolutely deserves a round of applause for how good of a job he's done since taking over. It wasn't an easy job, but he's been nothing, nothing short of spectacular. And I know a lot of people weren't on board with this rebuild at first, but I sure bet everyone's on board with the Blackhawks right now. And I couldn't be more excited to know that Connor Bedard is coming to sweet home Chicago in just over a month. All right, that's going to do it. 
for Tuesday, May 9th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. As always, thank you all for tuning into the show and make sure to go and subscribe and follow Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each and every day. Once again, I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until tomorrow's episode, that's going to do it here for the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We got Badar, baby. We got Badar, baby.